talking back to the toy box. Uh, so in this, this episode is a show and tell episode. It's something I made. And I made it during the course of the second lockdown here in the UK. Uh, but during the first lockdown, I was looking at my... Uh, tidying my collectibles cabinet. I was looking at my PVC figurines. There are some here in front of the camera. Uh, obviously depicting 1970s and 80s cartoons and TV shows. And they're quite you know, static. They're quite simple. Uh, in sculpt. Hand painted. I thought, you know what? I wouldn't mind making a figurine myself at some point. So, roll on to second lockdown, and, and that's what I did. I spent hours uh, making this um, figure. Uh, I'm really, really pleased with the outcome, and it, it, it looks good with the rest of the collection. Uh, I think, like I said, I'm really happy with, with the uh, final outcome. Uh, so, the character that I chose to um, make was uh, Cyril Sneer uh, from the Raccoons. And if you don't remember, uh, there's a clip coming up in a bit to remind you who he was, but he was a, a pink. Cigar smoking Aardvark. Oh, I mean, Aardvark's only in pink, and you wouldn't see cartoons, characters smoking cigars these days, that's for sure. Uh, but I have fond memories of watching uh, this cartoon. Um, it was it's a Canadian cartoon, it's it broadcast uh, from the mid 80s to the early 90s. Uh, I remember watching it on Going Live, which is a BBC um, Saturday morning kids TV show. Um, so that's why I've Vivid fond memories of uh, watching it from. Um, so when I was a kid, so most sculptors when they make a figurine use like a, a wireframe and foil, and sculpt a, a, on over the top of that. Uh, I'm going to be sculpting over the top of a um, McDonald's toy. So that's my baseline. That's what I'm going to be using to sculpt over. And the um, medium I'm using mainly is a uh, milliput. That's what I'm using to. Um, Sculpt. Uh, I've also incorporated other bits and pieces that I found uh, lying around uh, the house to help me. So the trunk is uh, it's got a lollipop stick, chip chips one inside it. Uh, the toenails are made. And you've got cocktail sticks to make his toenails nice and pointy. Uh, the arms, I've used some uh, twist wire which you can find in uh, packaging along with some uh, craft beads um, as well. And I've yeah, so all sorts of little bits, and also the uh, epoxy putty. So in the next few clips, you're going to see the uh, a clip of the cartoon to remind you who the character was. Um, I've took some stills of the uh, creation process. Uh, you can see the figure in its raw format, and then we'll see the final uh, outcome um, once he's been painted. Okay, well, so let's roll on.
Okay, so I've got that part in the um, creation process, the sculpting part of the process, where you know you're going along and suddenly you know you stop, you can't go any further, and, and that's when you're done. Um, so that's uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, obviously, the next stage would be to uh, bring it to life with a bit of colour. Let's have a look at the figure itself, shall we? Yeah. So I'm really happy uh, with the outcome of the figure and how it looks. You know, it, it looks like him, which is you know, obviously the idea. But yeah, I mean, the, the most difficult part of the process, uh, I think, was getting the right proportion, uh, the ratio um, of the figure. Because, you know, creating, um, taking something from a 2D image off a screen and creating it into, into a 3D object, you know, I thought it was really hard. Because when I was looking back at stills uh, on YouTube and, and, and video clips, you know, it was different every time, I suppose, because it was a, you know, a hand-drawn cartoon back in the 80s as opposed to a uh, CGI cartoon these days, which has a lot more fluidity and uh, consistency. So yeah, that's what I find the most hardest part, was, you know, just getting the right you know, scale of the figure. You know, sometimes I mean, it was too long, it was too short, you know, things like that. Um, yeah. uh, the most interesting part of the process I found was the, you know, the constant way I had to evolve, change the idea. I mean, at first I wasn't, I wasn't gonna have the, the hands and the hips, but I thought, you know, it's quite mean grumpy character, you know, I had to incorporate that. I wasn't going to have the, the scar in the mouth because I didn't want Fanti doing the um, the teeth, I thought it might be hard, but I thought, you know what, you need that iconic um, girl teeth showing. So yeah. So now I'm going to get on and paint it. So here he is in his final painted state. It took me a while but I got there in the end. I had to repaint it actually, um, made an error, so I had to strip it and start again. But I got there in the end and I'm uh, really happy with the overall outcome of the figurine. And it'll go well with the rest of the, my collection. Lee gave up on it a few times, um, to be honest with you. Um, but that's the beauty of you know your own personal arts and crafts project, you know, because you're in your own control of it. There's no time constraints, um, so you know you can come back to it a day later, a few weeks later, uh, regroup, um, come back with new ideas, fresh inspiration, and in how to, you know, solve a problem. Or if you're just getting a bit bored of it, come back freshly minded, and that's what I do a couple of times. Uh, the hair was the final piece I had to do on it. Uh, obviously, in the cartoon, it's quite thin and frail and dishevelled looking. I thought, oh, how am I going to do that? I couldn't, and then I was walking across the road and I saw some black plastic fibres lying, lying there. And obviously it'd been out in the weather and they'd, um, they'd all been, you know, weathered, dishevelled, twisted and broken. And I thought, oh, they're perfect. So I uh, gathered them up and put them into a little bunch and I've incorporated that into the build and it's a nice finishing touch on it. Uh, so I hope you like this show and tell video, please click the uh, like button, um, subscribe to the channel, uh, make some comments, feedback is always appreciated. I'll see you again in another video. Thanks for watching.